so much for joining. Today I have a very, very special guest with me, Miss Linning. She hi. is hi. She is a famous singer and songwriter, and she has written and sung a bunch of um, really successful songs. And would you like to tell us more about yourself? Hi, so my name is Lin Ying. I am based in Singapore. I am a singer and songwriter. I mostly write about my feelings. And um, I guess as an artist, I just kind of have no plan and I just release based on my feelings and see where it goes from there. Oh, wow. Okay, so it's a free and easy kind of thing for you? As in you just write what you feel? Yeah, for sure. I mean, like it's not like... It's one of those things you can't really force, you know? You yeah. can't just tell yourself you want to write a song today and it comes. You just gotta let it come to you. Oh, wow, okay. So, what's your writing process? Do you, like, um, you know, set aside a time and write or you just, like, write whenever you feel like it? Because I wish I could. I mean, I think if I was a more disciplined person, the ideal version of me would do that. I would set aside, you know, a couple of hours every day to sit by the piano. But in reality, I'm very much governed by my emotions and you know, momentary whims. So that's not what I actually put in practice, but it is what kind of works for me because um, I guess when a feeling gets too strong that I can't ignore it is when I know I just have to sit down and yeah. get it onto the piano. And, you know, that's a good measure for me to know that, you know, a song is right. It's ready to be written. Yeah, because that's what art is about, right? It's about, like, expressing yourself and conveying your emotions and things like that. And mm. it cannot be forced because... It's not something that, like, it's not just work that you can get done. It's you Yeah, know, yeah, really it's true. Try. But at the same time, I, I feel, I feel like I've read a lot of, you know, artists who are much more successful than me. And, you know, a lot of advice that they've given is that if you don't show up for the art, the art doesn't show up for you. And I think that's true. You know, I do think that um, there's a lot of, there's a lot to be said for setting aside time and, you know, respecting the fact that, you know, it's not, the art doesn't just, you know, come at your, at your whim and fancy and, you know, you have, you yourself have to set aside that kind of time and, and you have to show your commitment so that, you know, every time you, you give no excuse for the art to not show up. Yeah, exactly. So, okay, so have you always been passionate about writing songs and singing them or is it a newish kind of thing? I think it wasn't what it was called back then when i was a kid i i wrote poems about my my friends and my pets and i think that was the start of it i didn't always realize this until very recently but you know i think that that was the beginning so i remember maybe one of the first poems i wrote was after i lost my pet hamster her name was pearly and uh, i was nine at the time and i think it it was just, you know, I was just sad. It was the first time I'd ever lost anything in my life. And, you know, writing was a way for me to cope with it. I remember thinking I want to memorialize this moment and, you know, remember her this way. So, you know, I wrote a whole poem with all her little physical characteristics, her favorite food, her habits. And I do think that what I do now is really just an extension of that. Yeah, wait, you, you started when you were nine? You were able to write poems when you were nine? Yeah, I mean, you wow. know, I wouldn't say they were particularly good. They were just like pretty light yeah. hearts. But, you know, it's, yeah. It's for yourself, right? It's yeah, okay exactly. For you okay. And so when did you start writing songs? It was around the same age, maybe just like a year after. Um, I remember writing my first song, but I was going through an emo phase back then. Um, it was when bands like Green Day, Good Charlotte, Simple Plan were, you know, at their peak and you know, they had very dismal subject matter in their songs. And I think I was just really copying. But I do think that, you know, a lot of art starts out with copying. It's a lot of good copying. Yeah. You can actually come up with something that's authentic. I mean, copying or inspiration, it could it could be either. Yeah, fine line. So what's your, like, favorite thing about write, um, writing songs? Um, I think my favorite thing about it is that it captures a feeling and a moment in a way that no other medium can. Yeah. Just pure words alone can't do it for me. Smell, taste, um, you know, all these things are not enough for me to, to truly remember something with the same level of depth and intensity and accuracy as when I hear a song, you know? Yeah. Do you release all your songs or you keep a lot of them to yourself? <laughs> There's so many that I've kept that I haven't released. Oh, wow. So do you consider like songs to be your, you know, coping mechanism and your way to like, you know, let your feelings out and things like that? 
hundred percent, a hundred percent. I think I don't know what I would do if I didn't have songs. You know, um, when I see my friends who are not as um, expressive, you know, when they go through something and they they are frustrated, I, I I really wish you know they had this they had this ability to just you know put everything yeah. into a song because honestly it just makes so much of a difference when you can express everything you're feeling. So okay, so what's your songwriting process? So you first, so you like you're feeling something and then you just sit down and then you just pour your heart out. Yeah, then... I think um, most of the time I I am most comfortable writing on the piano because that was my oh, first okay. ever instrument. Um, so it's what feels most natural to me. And sometimes, in the past when I first started, yes, it always came from a feeling. But now that I'm doing this professionally, I'm also forced to. Um, forced to go into the studio on days where I don't necessarily feel like I would have written something. So my songwriting process has changed a little bit because of that. Um, and so when when such things happen, when I go to the studio, and I'm, I'm not really sure what I'm particularly feeling, there's nothing really deep, um, but you know, we've committed a day to do this. So yeah. I just sit down by the piano and I just start playing some chords. And I think what that does, just messing around on an instrument, being familiar enough with it to just mess around, I think that helps you access and unlock a part of yourself that you might not necessarily know that it's in there. So, I mean, you know, of course, we, we always have these dormant feelings in us that we're not necessarily aware of. And I think messing around on an instrument helps you uh, get in touch with that. So. Yeah. That's kind of what happens. I play a few chords. Sometimes the mood is not really right. And then when something feels right, I just catch that instinct and go along with it. And that's when I start to realize, oh, that there's actually something I'm feeling particularly sad about or something I'm, I'm happy about. And, you know, it just goes from there. I guess it also kind of in a way forces you to get in touch with your emotions if you have that obligation that, oh, I need to write something today. So then you just kind of figure it out. Okay. And what's your biggest challenge? Is it the pressure or what is the biggest challenge? Because it's not very easy to be able to write like such good songs. I mean, I think for me, the the art itself is, it's all part of the process. I don't really, even the down moments where, you know, I can't write anything, I, I stop seeing that as challenges because I understand that in order to, in order to, in order to give, you also have to take. In order to release, you also have to consume. So I treat that as just sort of part of the process. But I would say my greatest challenge in you know choosing this career and this life would be the uncertainty and also sometimes yeah. the sometimes the FOMO when I look at my friends who live more normal lives. And um, I sometimes I wonder what, what it would be like, you know, to not to have a career that's not so tied to your sense of such a personal in such a personal way your sense of self and self-worth and um you know i wonder what what that kind of separation feels like and i imagine it must be quite freeing but you know i think my life is freeing too in its own yeah. way so i'm guessing there's a lot of unpredictability i guess so that but that's a really good mindset to have that you just you don't treat it as a challenge you treat it as a you know just something that happens when you're in the industry okay yeah. so Hmm. And you, do you you performed as well at Esplanade, right? And I was looking at the pictures and wow, it was, how was that experience? It was so much fun. Oh, I wish you were there. It was just so much great energy all around. And I think, you know, it means more when I say this because I, I, I think I'm, I'm just not much of a performer, at least for a long time I've always I've always felt that I'm more comfortable in the studio and that I'm just not a natural performer. Sometimes I see some of my friends who are other musicians and the way they work a stage and the way they just work a crowd, I look at them with envy and I and I think, oh, I wish I was as natural as that. And yeah. I think that's always kind of been a, a, a point of insecurity for me. But I've also realized playing that Esplanade show and the fact that I was walking out to a room of people whom I could be certain came here because they wanted to. It's yeah. not because they walked past and someone dragged them along. You know, they had to buy a ticket and be there and they had to listen to the music and want to hear it. And I just think that makes so much more of a difference because it, it charges you with this, with this um, certainty and security of knowing that 
you know, you're, you're, not, you're not trying to convince anyone. You don't need to prove anything to anyone. Yeah. They are already here to just accept you with open arms. And I think it was only because of that that I was able to put on what I feel is my best performance and connect with the audience so deeply. Wow. So do you plan on performing more? Because I'm definitely going to come if you perform again. Yes, for sure. I will, you'll be the first to know. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> So what was the favorite song song what was your favorite song that you had written? Uh I think my favorite song is a song that's called Good Behavior. <laughs> really? Do you like it too? I, I do, I do. So for me it's Faith and then Good Behavior. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wait, do you do you feel like you struggle with faith and, and love as um, well? I mean, I'm thirteen, so I haven't had as many experiences. But yeah. I just think I just feel like your your lyrics are really really heartfelt and they're they're so thank you beautiful. I feel so seen <laughs> like for a long time people I would people would say that oh you know your songs are very soothing and I was yeah. like I'm not pouring my heart out just for you to call it relaxing yeah. you know and like when people talk about the lyrics I just feel so happy yeah it's the lyrics are really beautiful I mean I'm I I'm not a songwriter as of right now but like um, there are some singers whose lyrics are just really, really beautiful and natural. And, you know, I thought you were one of them. Oh, Susanna, I love that you just said, as of now. I mean, it's just it just shows how much possibility there is in yeah. your life and how aware you are of it. I don't think I was ever that aware at your age, you know? I don't think I ever knew how bright my future would be. And I think having that knowledge is so powerful. Yeah. I mean, expect the unexpected. Exactly. I'll probably try it out sometime. I don't know. I've actually never tried it yet. So maybe I have the ability, I just haven't explored it. What do you think is your main like hobby right now or like your biggest skill that you love most? Um, well, I study theatre, so um, I love performing on stage. So, And I also like writing, so maybe performing and writing. Yeah, wow. What, what, what would you say your hobby, biggest hobby or skill is? Songwriting or something? Well, you know, it's funny because once... And, you know, I, I believe you, you will probably have this experience as a, you know, naturally creative person uh, when you start having to make a career out of something creative, if that's what you choose. I do think that an element of play and um, that, that mindlessness that it used to give you will be lost uh, because, you know, now you have to harness it in a way that, you know, has a purpose and it's not just for fun like sometimes you'll be faced with the pressure to you know churn out 10 songs for a record label and um that's that's something that you know with that layer of pressure it takes it does take away something from what doing something creative gives you and um and that's why i think it's important to diversify and have multiple outlets so for me after i after songwriting and um, being an artist became my career I needed to find other ways to, you know, to feel playful again. And I think for me, that that became uh, drawing and painting my own album art. So I do all my cover art by myself because I just feel like it's a therapeutic process for me. Wow. Like after I make the music, it, it means a lot to me to be able to just play around and, you know, work with a medium that isn't like me make art that doesn't necessarily have to represent me or you know be accurate to my feelings but you know it can just look good and i yeah. think that's that's really nice that's so nice so wait yeah so you're like multi-talented i mean aren't we all you know in our own ways yeah have you ever had like a role model or an inspiration that you looked up to probably when you were younger or or even now i mean is there somebody yeah. that you look up to? I think there must be many, but um, I take inspiration from a lot of different people. Um, I think Van Gogh was one of them. I really, I really admired how passionate he was about his art, but at the same time, I, I hope I never become that tortured. Um, and there are also lots of musicians that I've looked up to my whole life, like. Bonnevere, The Carpenters, um, Bright Eyes is one of the musical acts that I like as well. Um, yeah, I think I think I don't I don't think I've ever had like one hero, but I've always just looked at different qualities and different people and tried my best to apply that to my life and my my work. Okay, so I'm so you take inspiration from a lot of artists to make your art. That's nice. 
And uh, what's the best part about it? Ooh, you know what? The best part is being able to go on holiday for three weeks and being able to walk into Orchard Road on a Monday at 10 a.m. and not see anybody. I think that's the best yeah, part. It would be empty. No one is going yeah, to Yeah, exactly. Them. And, you know, I think that's one of the things my, my friends who are gainfully employed miss out on because, you know, they're forced to... They have to take the leave and get it approved before they can take a holiday. And um, yeah, I think that flexibility is something that I really treasure and I don't take for granted. Oh, okay. So okay, yeah. so I wrote this down here. You were the first female Singaporean to sign a deal with Universal Music. How did that, how did that work? Um, so, I mean, I think when, when you're far away from that, like I was, and... Um, you can't really imagine that being within your realm of possibility. You always think that, oh, when a record label picks you up, you're going to be, like, discovered and, um, you know, things are going to happen. But, you know, I think one important thing that I've learned through my journey and something I think will be val very valuable for other uh, aspiring artists is that with all these big things, I, I think rarely do you ever feel like when they come, oh, I don't deserve it, or it's such a big yeah. earth-shaking thing. It's actually much more mild than you would imagine, because, and especially because of how this works today, in today's context. The, the story that you see of a record label discovering a star and like grooming a star from nobody yeah. into somebody, like that doesn't happen anymore, because labels don't take risks on people. Oh. You know, I mean, there, there's no longer, the market has changed so much that there's no longer that kind of budget to just like find someone who's undiscovered and groom them into being a star. And what really normally happens in reality is that you have to make your own way first. People are not willing to take a bet on you until you prove yourself to a certain level. And that means because the barriers to entry are so low now, everyone has access to a mic. Like, look, this is a mic in, in my bedroom, you know? Oh, yeah. and. That's something that people didn't have in the past, which is why, you know, those success stories were more common back then. But now that, you know, you can record on an iPhone um, and all you need is, is a laptop, you don't even really need a real keyboard to make good music. And I, yeah. I think because of that, um, the people in, in power, so to speak, have less of it. And therefore, what they're looking for is an artist or, you know, a personality who can build a community on their own and achieve some level of success by themselves and resonate and connect with an audience because it is so easy to connect with people now. Like, we've never met in real life, but you've reached out to me and I'll probably be talking to, you know, right now I'm probably talking to whoever else is listening in. So, you know, that... that that in itself makes it makes the process of music discovery so different and so that's what people would be looking for when when they see an artist trying to you know start out so things that happen to you chances are when they happen you'll feel like oh you know that's it's only natural it's not going to be some big earth shaking thing where like oh my life is going to change from this point on you'll actually be able to consider your options and and think that oh you know that's that's great, like, I'm being offered a deal, but what about the other deal, you know? And I think that's a really good thing for artists, to have control and power over their own music. Yeah, I mean, um, so I guess um, making art or connecting with people is a lot more accessible, so then the big um, record labels have a lot higher mm -hmm. expectations of the artists themselves, which I guess is also good in a way because they can um, give opportunities to even more artists if each artist is able to, you know have their own community and things like that. And, okay, so I have a lot of friends and there are a lot of people that I know who are aspiring artists and aspiring singers. So yeah. what would you tell them? What advice would you give them as someone who's kind of cracked the code in some sense? Yeah, I mean, I don't know if I have, but I think to anyone who is considering this, I think maybe the most helpful advice I can give is that the first, well, th this is applicable. I mean, this phase is specific only to music, but it's applicable across all, all disciplines. Your first hundred songs will be your worst. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know, if you're a photographer, your first hundred phot photographs will be your worst. And, um, you know, if you're a writer, the same applies. Yeah. I think that's something that was very powerful for me to hear. I can't remember who told me this, but... I, I do remember that when I first started writing my own songs, I I had this kind of um, 
I had this awareness, strangely, that what I was coming up with was still not good enough. It's like my ears were better than my brain and my hands were, you know, at that point, it's like my taste was better than my ability. And I think taste is very important, you know, pay attention to the things you like, consume them, and keep practicing, you know, producing and creating because at the start, you might feel very frustrated with yourself, especially if you have good taste, you know, you'll be frustrated at yourself for not being able to live up to that. Or you might, you might wonder like, oh, why am I so unoriginal? I literally just copied something else that I love. Yeah. But um, that, that's necessary. And that's all part of the process. You need to make a hundred bad songs before you start making decent ones. Okay, that's good advice. And that applies to everything, right? Like even yeah. for this thing that I'm doing, like no, right, exactly. the first hundred won't be as good and then you start gaining experience and then it gradually becomes better. How many, how many have you done so far? I've done about four or five, but I haven't yet released them. So. That's amazing. 95 more to go then. <laughs> So, okay, and so I'm a believer of younger self transitions, even though I'm technically would be the younger self. When well, I grew up a bit more. Just but a younger if, self than if you, you right tell now. tell your, I don't know, 13 year old self something, what would it be? Oh, let me try and imagine what it was like at 13. My God, you know. Were you still going through your emo phase? Yeah, a little bit. And you know, I, you know, what's actually funny at 13, and this is so full circle, and also why I was interested to do this interview with you. Um, at 13, I was rejected from SOTA. Oh, no. It was the first year that SOTA had opened admissions. Oh. And yeah, at the time, you know, there was no SOTA at all. Like, you know, I remember my parents got, um, I, maybe they saw it somewhere in the newspapers or something. Oh, there's going to be a new arts college. And at the time, they knew that I had some talent in music. Uh, and they were like, oh, maybe that's good for her. Maybe we should enroll her in that. And I remember we went for the camps and the auditions and everything. And um, yeah, I, I, I was quite amazed to be amongst like a circle of other, finally, other people who liked music. And yeah. I remember feeling like, oh, maybe that could be my life. But I didn't get through the auditions. And I think that, you know, it's also because I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a great piano player and I'm also not the most technical singer. So, yeah. so I, yeah, you know, there were kids who were so much better at me um, in piano. And I remember, you know, a little bit of doubt, uh, but I wouldn't say I let it debilitate me too much. I think I was pretty delusional that way. I remember just sort of, you know, being, uh, upset about it for a while, but also sort of moving on um, yeah. and just thinking, oh, there'll be other, other things to come. And at 13, I, I went to a regular school that was not art focused. And I think I always felt like a bit like an outcast. So when if, if I were to say something to my 13 year old self, I'd like to console her and tell her that, you know, it's okay. It's okay to feel different from your friends or to not feel like you're fully accepted by everyone because, you know, that's that's how life's going to be. You're not always going to be everyone's cup of tea and that's yeah. not a bad thing at all. You just need to find your own space in this world, find your own comfort and stay true to yourself and trust that you will do that. I mean, you need to be unique, so. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, it's not a bad thing to be different. Mm -hmm. So, okay. And, okay, I'm done with whatever questions I wanted to ask you. Are there any questions you would like to be asked? No, but can I ask you questions and, you know, tell me about what, what your first, um, like what your first indication was that you wanted to do this and the inspiration behind this whole series. Behind the series? Well, um, <laughs> hmm, so after PSLE last year, my parents were like, oh, you know, um, you're going to SOTA, you should, you should talk to more people and, you know, wow. ba basically, okay, I essentially wanted um, role models because so none of like my close me and stuff are in the arts industry so in that sense i don't really know much about arts except for the fact that i go to an art school and mm -hmm. so i thought that talking to like artists like you and then um i've talked to you know writers people who worked in the film industry i mean I, I try and talk to as many people as possible so that i can um understand more about them and more about how it is creating art and you know I could, if I have any questions about it, I can always ask you. So that, and then I have a lot of friends who are also like this, who who are like me, who are an aspiring artist. So 
I but they're not surrounded by people who yeah are not, okay i guess we're surrounded by people who are in the arts but um we can't really have like conversations with them you know like we can't mm. ask them a lot of questions and things like that so it's just a way to help myself and a lot of people understand how pr- making art is yeah, I mean, I you know, it's the same with me. My parents are both, uh, my dad's an engineer, my mom's a math teacher, you know. Mm-hmm. My brother is a history professor. None of them are involved in the arts the way I am. And I think just immersing yourself in a community is really important. And I also just want to say, if you ever have any questions, like, don't hesitate to drop me an email and yeah, I'll be very happy to answer. Thank you so much. For of course. This. Thank you so much for, like, not just this, but also, like, just being there in general. It's really nice of you. And yeah, thank you everyone who's watching and I hope that you've learned something from Miss Linning and yeah, I will be coming to your next performance and I will bring a bunch of people with me. Yes, so no one, it hasn't been announced yet, but you know, I've been on this role of just going with whatever I feel and not thinking too much about it. I am playing a show at SMU on the 13th of January. Day. so yes you know for whoever's listening and for yourself i would love to meet you in person and yeah i think it will be a great time okay yeah i will come then Yay. okay thank you so much everyone watching and thank you so much for listening for coming and have a great day bye bye